Hi everyone, this is Asma Mushtaq, your instructor, and in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about the inner product space. But before starting the inner product space, let's just have the idea what is meant by the inner product. So let's say if you are having a vector u whose components are u1, u2, up to so on, un, okay and in this way if you write down the dimension of this vector so since there are n number of components so that's why its dimension becomes n cross 1 similarly if you are having another vector v okay and the components of v are v1 v2 up to so on v n fine now if you take the transpose of u it becomes u of t and it dimension actually becomes u1 u2 up to so on u n and the dimension will be one cross and since there is one row and n number of columns and the dimension of v is actually equal to n cross one fine now if we take the dot product of u transpose with v then what will happen here you are having u transpose which is equal to u1 u2 un and then v vector is having the components v1 v2 and v and fine the dimension is 1 cross n and n cross 1 according to the matrix multiplication rule the resultant of u transpose into v will be a number a real number okay and its dimension will be 1 cross 1 fine here you will be having certain number n all right so this is actually known as the dot product or the inner product of the two vectors which is found by multiplying the corresponding components so u transpose into v will be equal to u1 v1 plus u2 v2 plus up to so on un v of n all right so given that if you are having a vector u which is equal to 1 2 and the vector v which is equal to minus 1 5 all right and we are interested in finding the u dot v or u transpose into v then it will become 1 2 and then minus 1 into 5 okay so 1 into minus 1 plus 2 into 5 once you simplify it becomes minus 1 plus 10 which is equal to 9 so this is certain real number fine and it has the dimension of 1 cross 1 okay and this is all about the inner product now moving to the inner product space concept let's assume that you are having two vectors u cross v they both belong to this vector space v okay and this vector space can have any dimension from the set of the real numbers all right then inner product space is actually a function that to each pair of u and v in v associates a real number u comma v that will be satisfying the four axioms now let's have a look what are those four axioms the first axiom is u dot v will be equal to v dot u so basically that is about the commutative property because when you are multiplying the numbers fine then the resultant is always same if they are the constants okay the second property is u plus v comma w if w is another vector then it is equal to u comma w plus v comma w all right <clears throat> now the third property is the scalar multiplicative property according to which if you multiply the first comp vector with some constant first component with the constant then c u comma v will be equal to c times of u into v because if you have scaled one vector with certain constant c then obviously their dot product will be scaled by the same constant factor c so this is the third property the last property which is very interesting property 
and this property is actually about the positive definite property. So if you take the dot product of a vector itself, the resultant will be zero or it will always be a positive number. So the resultant will always be zero in the case or if and only if u vector is equal to zero. Otherwise the resultant will always be positive number. Now let's do an example for better understanding this concept. So for any two positive numbers, say 4 and 5, 4 and 5 are the two positive numbers and for the two vectors u is equal to u1 comma u2 and v is equal to v1 comma v2 means they both belong to r2 because only two components of the vectors are present and they both are actually real numbers then if you define the inner product space function 4 times of u1 v1 plus 5 times of u2 v2 then you have to actually test that it defines an inner product on these vectors okay so first of all the first property was the commutative property according to which u dot v should be equal to v dot u so what does it mean you will switch the position of u with v and you can clearly see here four times of v1 u1 plus five times of v2 u2 will be actually equal to u comma v so it doesn't make any change if you multiply 2 into 3 and 3 into 2 the resultant remains same because it's the multiplication of the constants okay so the first property is satisfied now let's have a look of the second property okay so u plus v which means if you add an one vector in another vector and then you multiply or take the dot product with the other vector w then it should be equal to the inner product of u comma w plus v comma w or it will be equal to the summation of the inner product individually so what i will go, uh, do u plus v comma w will be equal to four times of u1 plus v1 okay then w1 plus five times of u2 plus v2 and then w2 let's just expand it and we will have four times of u1 w1 plus four times of v1 w1 plus five times of u2 w2 then five times of v2 and then w2 all right so if we actually arrange the terms we can see that four times of u1 w1 plus five times of u2 w2 then plus four times of v1 w1 plus five times of v2 w2 all right so this is actually the inner product function of if there are u and v then u and v now here we are having u and w so this is the inner product of u comma w plus the inner product function of v comma w all right now let's have a look of the third property so this property is also satisfied which is the scalar multiplication property according to which c times of u comma v is equal to four times of c u1 v1 plus five times of c u2 into v2 so this is basically equal to we can take c common from here so we will have four times of u1 v1 plus five times of u2 v2 so this is equal to c times of the inner product of u and v fine so this property which is the third property is also satisfied now let's have a look of the last property which is the positive definite property according to which inner product of a vector with itself should be equal to zero if and only if the vector is equal to zero otherwise it will be some positive number so four times of u1 v1 plus five times of u2 v2 now we will switch or replace u v with u okay so we will have four times of u1 square plus five times of u2 square okay if the vector u 
has both components equal to 0 then what will happen 4 times of 0 square plus 5 times of 0 square which is equal to 0 so this resultant this is equal to 0 only if the vector is 0 all right otherwise if u is equal to minus 1 comma 1 then what will happen 4 minus 1 square plus 5 1 square so we will get 4 minus 1 square is actually positive number plus 5 into 1 which is equal to 9 always some number greater than 0 so this is the fourth property hence we can say that this function which has been defined by the dot product of u and v is actually the inner product function thank you for watching